All right, um, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I've only got one person here so far, um, but it's a little bit past. So I'll go ahead and, and start um, um, see if there's questions and start working on things as usual. So we're a little bit behind, so I haven't set up things. So um, I mean, hopefully everybody's mostly past this part, but I do have to get the um, repository cloned for our assignment uh, six here. Uh, I almost got assignment fives um, uh, returned. Uh, I still have one or two more to do here. So um, I should have those back in, in, uh, after, after we're done with our session here, I should be able to complete those up. All right, so yeah, assignment six is um, we're finally kind of getting into actual data structures. Um, I mean, linked lists, queues, stacks, and things. Although, I mean, up to this point, we've been working on like our most recent assignment was a list type. So, I mean, you know, we've certainly been thinking about data structures so far, like uh, the list type, and, and uh, we've built some others, uh, some other examples of data types. So. So as usual, let's go ahead and accept this assignment. Um, and um, yeah, now that we got going here, we got a few people joined finally. Um, you know, if you have questions, feel free to ask at any time. We're gonna do the usual here. So I need to get my project set up. So let's clone our repository. I really liked the last assignment um, for a couple of reasons. So hopefully you've gotten some more idea of how Git and GitHub actually work now, um, especially like creating our branch. So at the end of the assignment five, if you got all the way through it, you've got two branches in your assignment. Um, so you got one, which was the original feedback branch, which, um, is the non-template version. So that would allow you to keep working on the list without the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the templatization, the, the template code added to it. And you have the, the template um, uh, branch, which uh, had the, the, the work to templatize the code. And, and if you got everything finished correctly on assignment five, I would even, uh, go ahead and, and and merge that pull request. So we'd end up merging the templatized version back into the main branch. Although some people had conflicts at the end on their um, um, on their template branch, so they couldn't automatically merge those. So I, I'm, I'm not going to automatically merge the assignment fives, even if I accept it. If you did have conflicts, I'll leave that for students that are interested. Usually the conflicts are just pretty minor. Um, so, so it should be relatively easy to merge that back into the main branch if you need to as well. Anyway, that's enough about assignment five. So anybody have any questions about assignment six before we get going? So um, at this point, uh, I have found it, reconfigured. Uh, let's check that we're building here. Check. I did start my recording, didn't I? Um, yeah, I think so. All right. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more files um, in this assignment, um, uh, quite a few. So we'll talk about this here. But you are, again, only making changes in one of these, basically, to implement the, uh, the, the linked list, a few methods for the linked list class. Um, so yeah, if it builds, you know, as usual, you should see it. Um, build all these things this time. Um, I should tell you the terminal ready, and then we should be able to run our test. So um, yeah, you'll have a bunch of tests running, um, uh, two test cases in the uh, test, the array-based list. Uh, we're we're going to be working on the linked list-based, but, but all these tests should be running and passing for the array-based. Um, all right. So no preliminary questions. Let's go ahead and 
talk about here. So as I began talking about, uh, although this is probably before I started recording, um, this kind of marks, this is a uh, kind of halfway through the class, although we're, we are past the midterm here, but um, um, uh, we are turning to exclusively thinking about data structures now, okay? So we've had a little bit about the algorithms part, the analysis of algorithms, um, sorting and searching algorithms, um, 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 the um, uh, recursions and things like that. So, so now we're going to, to be looking at issues about data structures, okay? With, with that background, especially kind of the background to understand uh, algorithmic complexity. So, so to know what we mean by, you know, something is more or less efficient, you know, it's running in linear time or, or logarithmic time or in squared time. Uh, was, you know, you need at least a basic understanding of that to be able to compare the different ways that you might implement data structures and, and how, what, what the trade-offs will be, you know, which, which data structure, which way that you would implement it would be more or less efficient depending on how you're going to use it, right? Um, so we are going to um, implement um, our list class here. So, so we're still working with our list class, uh, but we are um, throwing a couple of new things in here um, and um, we're gonna be implementing a linked list version of the class, okay? So the, the, the list version, the, 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 the list class that you've been doing actually in like two or, uh, or so of the previous assignments was basically an array-based implementation of, of, of a list, right? Because we we kept we kept a statically allocated um, block of memory, an array, and anytime you added items to the list, we just put it in that array. Um, you know, we, we didn't have methods for like removing um, or things like that. Um, but, but you also had you implemented a search um, on on an assignment before the most pre before the most recent one. Um, anyway, so before I jump into task one, let me describe the setup here, because there's also some, um, there's also some um, um, practice on um, using uh, inheritance and using object-oriented programming here as well. So in, in this assignment, um, and, and this would be typical of how you would implement a data structure like a basic list uh, in the library. Um, we've got a base class called um, 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 this list. List.hpp uh, holds what's known as the abstract base class um, for our list data type. And um, this defines a bunch of methods. So, so what we're implementing for our list for this assignment um, is this API. This is this is an application programming interface, and some of these you, you kind of implemented um, for um, your your most recent assignment. Um, although some of these are commented out currently, but um, so the API for a list. So no, no matter how you actually implement the list, you want to be able to do certain things with the list, and you already kind of know these things because you've been implementing some of these already. So you want to be able to. Um, push things on the front or the back of the list. So, so we called that um, a, a pinned and pre-pinned. We, we, uh, in the previous assignment, uh, we're, we're changing the names a little bit, although we're gonna keep the same overloaded operators, okay? So we're gonna have like an insert back and then insert front instead of a pinned and pre-pinned. But we're gonna use the, the in-stream and the outstream operator for the um, inserting onto the back or inserting on the front of the list, okay? Um, and we're, but not, and we're going to add in the ability to delete items from the list. So, so like to remove the item from the front or the back of the list. Okay, uh, this isn't maybe everything you'd want to do with a list. So you might want to also be able to do things like insert in the middle, right? Um, uh, so, so maybe insert values um, not at the beginning or the ending of the list, but somewhere in the middle, right? Um, and we can. I'm sure I talk about those on our lecture videos. Um, you know, but, but we could add that as part of the abstraction for a basic list class that you might want to do. Um, other things you might want to be able to iterate over a list. So, so we'll see a little bit of that in this assignment here. 
we might want to be able to search and sort um, a list, right? So we don't have those, but we could add in like the, the search and the sort um, that you did back in the searching and sorting for our list um, as part of the API as well, okay? But just no, notice that these methods are all virtual, um, although some are commented out here, uh, because the, this is just a um, abstract base class. So it doesn't actually implement uh, any of these methods that are virtual, okay? The, 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 the base list class does implement some things that all lists, um, all, that all concrete implementations of lists um, uh, can use. So it does implement a get size and an is empty. So like, for example, if you look at list.cpp, there are a few things implemented in there. Um, so, so a few of the member methods, not very many, like get size and is empty, um, the overloaded output streaming operator, which calls the string method, um, which is also implemented. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not implemented. So, so string. Yeah, that, that's that. That was kind of an important part. So, so string is a virtual method. So, so concrete classes have to implement that. So, um, so the overloaded output streaming operator expects all lists to have a string method that it can call, but um, it doesn't implement that. It leaves that to a base class. Okay? So anyway, um, um, if you've never worked with um, kind of uh, inheritance and in object-oriented programming, this is uh, this is a fairly typical example of, of how this works. Okay, so let's look at uh, there are two um, implementations. Um, and you're going to be at, you're going to basically be finishing the implementation for the linked list version, but there's an array based version as well called a list. So a list is the array based version of our list um, interface and L list is the linked list version of our um, list interface. Okay? And by the way, th this all follows the, um, our, our, both of our textbooks use this basic idea. So, so both of the, the our textbooks, uh, um, talk about uh, the idea of an abstract base class and then give some examples of concrete implementation using either an array to implement the list or using a linked list to implement the list, right? So let's look at um, the array-based version, all right? I'll bring up the header. So here's the, the header for list class, which defines the interface. And this is our mostly, our mostly abstract base class. And here's the concrete implementation A list, okay? So notice that A list, so this A list colon public list T, oh, and by the way, our classes are all templatized here. So uh, our, our list class, um, um, we, we can have lists of, of any generic type, like you uh, hopefully got pretty much through um, on your most recent assignment five, okay? So we're gonna be building list classes that, that can be containers for different types, ints, floats, whatever you want, our, our list, uh, you know, list of whatever types you want them to be. So, so um, anyway, so our uh, array-based lists um, inherits publicly from the list T's, from, from list containing Generic type T here, right? So, so the list T is the is the abstract base class, um, and it, it, it inherits from that. Again. But basically, anything that's defined to be virtual, we have to implement um, in a concrete class in order to make it concrete. Um, okay. So, in order to be able to actually make instances of a list 
uh, we have to implement all these virtual methods. So they'll have exactly the same signature. So let's like, for example, look at um, string. They'll have exactly the same signature, except it doesn't have the virtual in front or the equal zero at the back. So, so, so the equal zero means this is a, per, a pure vir virtual method in C++, which you don't really have to worry about for right now. Just understand that this is a virtual method, which means that this is defining an API that any class that inherits from this base class has to implement that in order to become a concrete um, class that you can make instances of, right? So the only reason that these are commented out is because in order to get your L list class to compile, I had to uncomment these until you actually implement these, okay? So you'll be adding these to your L, your linked list version, and then you'll need to be uncommenting these virtual calls in the list.hpp, okay? But, you know, um, it doesn't hurt anything um, to also um, define these for our A list, uh, even though, uh, these are commented out currently, but, but our A list also has, you know, the insert back and the operator um, for insert and the insert front and so on um, already implemented as well. Okay. Um, and before I go to task one, then let me just, just talk a little bit. So the, the implementation of the A list basically and, and maybe if you had known this, you could have actually looked at this to get some hints on how you implemented your, your templatized version in the assignment you just completed here, right? But, but anyway, if you look at the A-list, the implementation of these functions, these should look pretty similar to what you just did, like for your append and prepend and stuff like that. So uh, let me look at those real quickly here. So, um, so A-list.cpp is our implementation file. So we've got methods like, um, Um, so part of the abstraction is you have to do get, th there's some that we didn't do, let me jump to the ones that you just did. So for example, insert back is like the append, right? So, so insert back will look pretty much like most people's append um, where we grow list if needed. Um, we just add the value um, onto the end of the list and increase the, the size of the list, right? And then we overload um, and we're returning a reference to our list Notice this is a little bit tricky here, but um, um, the, the API defines that these return just a list reference. So we're returning ourself, which is an A list, right? But that's fine because A list is a type of, of list to you. So A list to you is a type of list to you. So, so it's fine, even though we say that we're returning a reference to the base cat class, the list to you, we return ourself, you know, the, the array-based list, right? But, but that, that works fine as far as this interface kind of goes. So. Um, and here's our overloaded operator where we just call insert back instead of append. Um, and here's the, um, the um, oh, well, delete back is something you didn't have to delete any methods before, but here's the delete back. And then insert front is like the prepend. Um, so we do that, we shift the values. Um, put the value at index zero for our array-based implementation, right? So, so again, for our array-based implementation, since this is a concrete class, the, um, the abstraction doesn't define any, uh, well, it, do, it defines one member, fun, one member variable. So all lists have to be able to keep track of the number of items, the, the size of the list, right? But for concrete implementations, you might have to have other member variables. So for our array-based concrete implementation besides the size, you know, we have to have the array, you know, the, the block of memory um, to hold the actual values. Um, and we have to have that allocation size because we need to manage the memory dynamically. So again, this is all stuff you should be familiar with that you had to either implement or had to use in the previous assignment or the assignments before this one. All right, clear enough on that? So that, that's, that's the stuff you're given. And I think I'm ready to start talking about task one here. You understand that, then what, then you should understand. So we're going to, you're going to be implementing a list again, but now we're going to implement um, a list that instead of using an array uses a linked list, which, which was, um, um, 
the topic of the unit uh, for uh, this the, the, these two days, today and tomorrow. We're talking about linked lists. Linked lists are dynamically allocated. Um, so instead of allocating a block of memory, we just dynamically allocate a node uh, one at a time to hold a single value, and then we link those up with pointers. Okay. So to, to, to work with linked lists, you have to be comfortable with uh, well, with dynamic memory allocation, but with using pointers and with linking them and following pointers and things like that. So that's what you're going to get practice with um, uh, when we're implementing our linked list here, right? Um, so, so like we did for the previous assignment, we're going to be implementing the append and the overloaded operator to do append um, is our first thing, but doing it with our linked list here, right? So, um, um, so like I already said, I mean, you know, every, everything in the A list should already work, already be working and all the tests are uncommented out already for the A list. So what you're gonna be working with is the L list, the linked list version, right? So usually you'd want to start by uncommenting first test case. Um, so that yeah, again, there should be like on the previous assignment, there should be two um, test cases for task one. So one, the first one is just calling the insert back, and the second one is testing the overloaded um, operator that uses insert back um, to do the actual work. So. Um, If we uncomment that as usual, if you try to build, it should fail because you know we don't have insert back um, uh, implemented. Uh, like I was saying, uh, um, it's, it's, you know the instructions are kind of long, but um, um, as you're implementing these, make certain that you also um, go ahead and uncomment um, the uh, the commented out virtual um, definition of the API in the list.hpp, okay? So to do insert back, you'd wanna go ahead and uncomment that. Um, and then you'll need to add this method to your um, uh, your L list header file, okay? So, um, so the L list.hpp defines our linked list. Uh, I already gave you so the the private member variable. So for our linked list, we're going to basically be just keeping track of the front node. So this is a pointer to the front node of the um, linked list that that's going to be maintained by our linked list class here, and this is a pointer to the back node of our linked list. Okay. Um, So, so uh, I'm just trying to look at the order here. So I had clear, I had insert back after clear. So let's go ahead and add um, our insert back after the clear here, All right? So again, you know, um, I mean, I'm mostly given an LA, so it shouldn't be too that tough to figure out the signatures here because basically they're given to you. So that's kind of what an abstract base class, abstract base class does. It defines an, an API, an application program interface, which means it defines the signature of functions of the methods that you would use to call and work with the list class. Okay, so you know it's not a virtual function anymore. We're going to implement it. So besides removing the virtual and equal zero, the, but otherwise the signature should be the same, okay? So, um, and, and again, you know, so this is basically the same as our append method. Um, so we're taking a, a constant reference to some T as input, and we're returning a reference to ourself um, as our result, right? And we still won't compile here. Uh, I need my linked list uh, .cpp file um, implementation file here. So after clear, then we want um, uh, 
because if you don't want to type all these, you know, the, the, uh, the documentation for insert back would be pretty similar to the documentation that you would see it um, in um, the A-list version, for example. Um, although, you know, always be careful when you're copying documentation, I mean, to reread it, you know, so some things definitely probably would change here. So, um, so here, you know, um, we're not growing the list allocation, uh, although we are returning a method, uh, a reference to the list instance. Um, so this method simply appends, uh, simply creates um, a new node and pins this new node to the end of the length list for this class, for, uh, for this um, uh, instance, All right? There's a nice extension that will reflow these things instead of trying to keep them around 80 lines. I should install that in this extension. I won't do it now, but instead of having to reformat these, make sure they're not too long when you modify your comments. So, um, um, yeah, so this still won't compile um, until we return something. I don't think it'll compile because um, it'll complain about um, Oh, um, yeah, I didn't templatize this yet. So um, I guess you could also grab that, although your template boilerplate will be pretty much the same for all these, right? Uh, but yeah, we're not returning anything. So um, it should, um, oops, uh, rid of the semicolon there. So, um, I maybe I didn't save my ls.hpp. Anyway, um, for our stub, we could always just go ahead and return ourselves so we know we need to do that for all these methods um, again here. So well, maybe I better make it clean here. Uh, so let's, let's see, it makes it more compiling now. Uh, oh, I meant just, um, no, that's right, turn. Um, oh, um, yeah, so, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm forgetting stuff too. So um, insert back is a member of our class. Um, so forgot to add that in there. So our, our class is the L list um, uh, holding type keys. There you go, that'll make it happier. That's better. I'm gonna do a clean build again. Though. I still don't trust it. So, okay, that looks good. So um, now we should be able to run our test, and then we're good to go, or at least we're ready to start actually implementing um, it here. So. Um, So yeah, our first failing one is um, get size here. So, all right, because when you insert, uh, so initially the list is empty. So let me talk a little bit about that. So, so now we can talk about how you, how you have to actually implement this, right? But we look at the constructor for the linked list, um, basically that you're given so by default, if you create an empty list, um, it starts off with a size of zero, um, and it starts off with front and back being null or pointing to, to null pointers. Okay, so uh, empty list should always have front and back be null, right? Um, 
So, you know, one thing insert back has to do is it has to should increment the size because we're inserting a new value on the list. So the list should grow by one whenever you insert a value. But the other thing you have to do, like I described here, um, you want to start by just dynamically allocating a new node. So you have to call new, create a node, and, and maybe I should have mentioned those. So, um, so you know, we are working with linked lists here, which is kind of the topic of, of our um, uh, unit for, for these two days. If you look in the linked list um, class, oh, um, actually, you know, one reason why there's a lots of files is um, I, I started making certain everything was in its own file. Okay, so once once projects get to a certain level of sophistication, you want to stop having multiple things in the same file. So in, in the previous, even in the previous assignment, I had um, like the exceptions for the list class in the same file as the list itself. But but now we've, we've gotten kind of complex enough that we want everything that's a you know um, everything that is its own unique thing to be in its own set of files, two files usually for C++. So, so all of the declarations in uh, HPP header file, and then all the implementations of those things in the corresponding .cpp file, right? So for our linked list, uh, we are using this node class. Um, so a node class is relatively simple. Um, a, a node is just a structure. Um, that holds a value and it holds a pointer to the next item, right? So um, when you're inserting on the back here, basically you want to dynamically allocate um, that new node. Um, and um, this node is just a, a plain structure. So we don't use a class for the node here. So that we don't have any like access or methods or anything like that. So later on, uh, we might actually work with nodes where they act, they're actually more like classes. And, and for example, if you want to set the value for the new node that you create, you might have to do a set value or something like that. But, but for this assignment, um, it's just a regular structure. So after you dynamically allocate it, um, you know, you want to set the value for the node that you create to that value that's been inserted um, into the linked list. Um, and then you want to initialize the node's next pointer to be null because uh, for insert back, we're inserting this, to, it's going to be the last node on the linked list. Okay, so the, the last node of the linked list has to uh, have the next pointer be pointing to null pointer. That's how when you're iterating through the nodes on your linked list, that's how you know when you've gotten to the end of the list um, is, is when, when next is null pointer. All right, and then once you dynamically allocate the node, um, the way you insert it into the existing list, there's kind of um, so so the way that you work with linked lists. Um, uh, normally, you have to do it as kind of a set of special cases. Okay, so in this case, um, there's um, a, a special case if, if the the list is currently empty. Um, so you need to do different things depending on if the list is empty or not empty, right? So if the list is empty, that means that both front and back are pointing to null pointers. So, so both front and back don't point to anything yet. So, so when the list is empty, you simply just have to set front and back to both be pointing to that new node that you just created. And of course, setting size to be in, in, incrementing size, but for both, for all these cases, you have to increment size by one. Um, so yeah, if the list is empty, just you just gonna be sending front and back to that new node, right? If it's not empty, then what you do is um, the back should always be pointing to the last node on the linked list, okay? So the new node you're creating should become the new back node. So, so you wanna point the back pointer. So, so basically the current back pointer needs to now be pointing to this new node that you created. So that's that's how you insert it into the list, and then you have to update back pointer to be to be pointing to your new node because that should become the new back, you know, the, the, the new last node of your list, right? So hopefully that makes sense. But that's 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 your two cases here, right? So either it's empty, so both front and back point to the new node, 
um, or it's not empty, in which case this new node has to become the new back node by pointing the current back to this new node and, and setting back then to point to the new back. Um, oh yeah, note about this. Um, um, this is kind of annoying, um, but um, let me explain this here. So remember, um, the um, there were some things that were defined that are common to all classes. So some methods like like get size, and and even some member variables like size were defined in the base class, the, the abstract base class size. Okay. Now for most Object-oriented languages. If you um, if you derive a class from the base class, I mean, uh, especially if you're using public uh, inheritance like we're doing here, um, these these methods or like these variables that are um, private would still be able to be used and seen in a child class. Um, now for C++, you can't do that, but if you make member variables, if you make things protected instead of private, the protected is something that's kind of halfway in between private um, and public, okay? So normally the, 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 the API, the things you wanna call have to be public. And then normally you wanna make um, your data as private, right? But if you're doing inheritance in C++, if you wanna define some things in base classes that, that, that child classes need to use, you want to define those to be protected like we did here. So that, that means that size uh, can't be normally used by users of our list classes, but child classes like the A list and the L list can access, access uh, protected member variables like size here. But uh, so, so normally if we weren't working with templates, uh, you wouldn't have to do anything special to access size, but, but because of templates, uh, there's this little crustiness, um, and I can't remember if I um, if I did the defines here. I don't think I did. So, um, so, so for example, I tried to just increment size plus plus. Um, I think that you might get a compile error here um, as if it doesn't know that there's a member variable called size in your list class because you know again normally if, if we weren't work, working with templatized classes here this wouldn't actually be a problem this, this will work fine for non-template classes um, if it's a protected member um, that you're referencing um, in, in, in a base class that you're inheriting from here right uh, but but because of these templates here, it's, it has problems doing this. So if I compile that, um, yeah, I mean, it complains as if um, as if it doesn't know that um, that variable. So um, there's basically the the, the preferred method. Uh, you can either just use this. Um, and that will disambiguate and then it'll be happy, it'll, the compiler will be happy. So if I need to, to refer to a protected uh, member variable, you can use this, or I can use this. I, I think I prefer you guys to go ahead and use this one. So here we're kind of explicitly saying, okay, you dumb compiler, look in the list T namespace. There is something called size there, it's protected. I, I can use it. If you just look, you know, open your eyes and look in that namespace and find it. So, Again, you don't normally have to do this, uh, except when we're doing templates. This is some cruftiness. I think the newest versions of C++, they're maybe trying to fix that, but um, so anyway, if you do that, um, it should make it happen. But you have to do that anytime you want to access. Um, I guess the only thing you've got is size um, in this. Um, in this um, assignment, right? So in future assignments, there might be additional protected member variables, but yeah, for this one, anytime you wanna to refer to size, you have to use either this pointing size or explicitly say it's in the list T um, namespace. That's, that's where you find the size.
All right. So by the way, um, yeah, that should probably uh, actually pass the um, first test now. Since we were testing if get size works, or it should. So now we're failing on 44. All the way down there. So yeah. Which makes sense because we, we don't fail on anything. So get size by setting the size um, is empty works correctly now because it's probably testing size. Um, but yeah, until we actually have or actually putting things on the linked list, um, um, you know, passes all those things. But it's, it's failing when we go to say, okay, what's actually in the list? It should have a five on it. All right, um, questions? Nobody's been asking questions here. Is that, um, that help you guys get started? I think once you get past that, um, you know, the, the next two will be pretty quick. I might not talk about these very long. Um, all right, well, um, insert front um, will be pretty easy because uh, it's like your pre pen. Um, although, well, actually, uh, um, Insert front um, is a lot easier to do than um, than for the array based one, right? Because for the array based uh, prepend or insert to the front, you had to do all the shifting of the values up in your array, and that was an that was a big O of n. I, I don't know if I talk about it in the assignment here. So so that takes a, a, a complexity of, of n because you have to do a for loop um, and do in assignments um, at least to shift all the values up. Or array based um, prepending or inserting in the front. But um, so, so here's where linked list is uh, one, one place where linked list is superior in performance to um, an array based implementation of linked list. Because if you insert front, it stays as a constant time. So just like inserting back to insert the front, all you have to do is create the new node um, and make it the new front node, so the back node. But, uh, but all that involves is the, the Creating the new node, um, and then setting the front pointer to that new node, and then setting your next uh, the, the links up correctly to insert it into the node. Okay, so, so it's really the same time complexity to um, insert to the back as it is to insert to the front. All right. Um, so I kind of skipped there. Uh, uh, so get front and get back. Um, again, you know, for all of these, I already gave you kind of a big hint. I mean, figuring out the, um, um, I, I mean, right, we have, I'm really, really haven't completed a task one. So, I mean, after you get insert back, you do also have to um, um, put in the, um, uh, the overloaded operator that we're going to be using for, um, Ending or inserting on the back of the list. Okay. But again, that should just call insert back. Um, so, yeah, your task two is uh, get front and get back. Okay. But, but yeah, so like I was saying, like I was beginning to say, you know, so you got the signature for these. So, I mean, you can either, you can either use the, you should uncomment those when you start on task two um, or uncomment the first one if you're just going to work on get front first. So I can't remember if um, once we get to task two, so the second part of task one is just um, testing the overloaded operator. Um, and uh, yeah, so task two, we actually also break it up into two different uh, unit tests. So get front initially um, before we get back. Uh, 
But well, anyway, um, but but yeah, you can get the signatures from there. Um, you can also use the existing A list um, class. Uh, that would also tell you the signature, um, and and will also get you kind of a starting point for the function that you need to write. So, for example, for um, uh, A list uh, get front should have you know again you know both of these are implementing the abstraction the API for our list type. So, so a list will have all these same functions as well, uh, but you have uh, example implementations for these. But of course, these are implementations in a list for the array based um, version. Right? So, so, but you know, basically everything's the same here except uh, for your l list. Um, except uh, uh, you know, the, the name is l list instead of a list, and your implementation, of course, is going to be completely different. Right? Um, so. Um, for the array-based list, um, um, you do need you just return uh, the value at index zero. That's the value at the front. Um, so um, you are supposed to be throwing an exception. So so um, and in fact, you might be able to just use exactly the same code for the exception here for your L list, right? Um, because is empty um, um, is implemented by the base class, right? Um, so is, as long as you're maintaining size correctly, um, uh, get size and is empty should work for all child classes of the list class, uh, right? So if size is zero, it will return that it is empty. Um, so, so yeah, you can use the same kind of thing to be checking um, if it's empty, uh, throw the exception otherwise, then, then what you wanna do for the um, linked list version is to, you know, for front, you want to get the, the item pointed to by your front pointer. Uh, that, that would be the value that you want to return. Um, and, and then instead of getting the item at the end of the array, you want to get the item that's pointed to by the back pointer of your linked list, right? So all of these, both for the array based and for the uh, your linked list based, uh, all of those are order one. Um, they're O1, constant time. Um, um, expressions to get the value at the front or to get the value at the back um, of, of the current list, right? So there's a question, this is a bit of an aside, but um, um, so if, if I were to, add, if I, if we were to add in, uh, this isn't part of the assignment, but, but, you know, another thing, an obvious thing that's missing from the list here is the ability to insert a value um, in the middle or to get a value from the middle of the list, right? So what would be the complexity to insert a value into the middle of um, an array-based list? Um, and I'll go, I mean, it's kind of rhetorical, I'll, I'll kind of go ahead and answer, but basically there's no getting around that, um, um, however we specify the API, so most likely you would say, I, I want to insert it like at a particular position. So you might give an index, right? Um, so for the array-based, um, you don't have to do any searching to get to that index value, but if, if you want to insert the value, insert a new value at a particular index, that means you have to shift everything up from that location. And in the worst case, if I ask you, ask you to insert it um, at position zero, you know, do a prepend, it goes back to being O n, right? So you have to shift all n values, right? So, so the worst case beha behavior for inserting in the middle is, is O n for array bits. For linked list, um, um, it still doesn't really help you, right? So the inserting the new the new value is no problem, right? That that's kind of constant time. But the problem is is, is that again, like, like if I want to insert it at the, the to be the fifth value in the linked list, there's no way I can get to the the, the position five of the linked list in, unless I start at the front of the linked list and then you know uh, search the list uh, by by following the next pointers till I get to the position five. And in that case, the worst the, the worst case behavior would be if I want to insert at the value at the end or at, at the one right before the end. Um, there's nothing I can do except for start at the front of the list and and and, and do in or in minus one uh, follows of my next pointer till I get to the correct position 
where I, I'm asked to insert the value. So, so both the array-based and the linked list versions of our list would be O in, in the worst case, for inserting value somewhere um, in the list. Uh, anyway, I know I'm kind of kind of going off on a tangent there, but that's the that's the kind of that's really the 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 heart of this class. That's the kind of stuff you ought to be able to understand when people start discussing, you know, the trade-offs. So how would I implement this kind of API, this kind of abstraction for a a class or a data structure, right? So if I do it this way, you know, uh, inserts are easy, but um, appends are hard. But I can do it this alternative, and it makes these kinds of operations easy, but those become hard. That kind of stuff. All right. Um, so I haven't had a lot of questions. Um, so maybe I'll slow down a little bit. Um, um, I mean, uh, any questions so far about task one, two, or three here? I've talked about all three of those. Okay, everybody thumbs up, good. So, so the last two tasks are to add in or well to implement the, uh, the delete. So, so there, there's two methods um, that allow you to remove a value from the middle of the list. So we don't have insert in the middle, but yeah, I'd kind of forgotten that we do have a way to um, remove values from the list uh, that aren't necessarily at the, the first or the last value, right? Um, so one is to delete the value at index, right? Um, so, so basically the, the value uh, we use as if the, the list um, is kind of array-based, right? So, so the value at the front of the list we refer to as being at index zero. That's the zeroth value. So we are using zero-based indexing. Uh, the, 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 the value after the front value would be at index one and so on. So, so if, I, if I asked to, to delete um, the value at index zero, um, that would be to, to remove the, the value at the front of the list, right? Um, so for our array based, um, so before you look at it or think about it, so what is the time complexity to remove a value at index at a particular index? Um, so so to, to implement the delete index uh, for the array based, right? Think about it. Uh, so where's delete? Um, if you think about it, it's 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 basically the same as uh, prepending, right? Because again, in, in the worst case, um, we we can't leave holes in our list. I mean, that would be another way to implement an array-based list where you want to uh, support uh, removing values. You could just just put like a, like a special flag that indicates this value is missing, right? The, the, this, this current one is empty. Um, so that's one approach, but, but we're not really doing that. So instead, we're always going to keep all the values packed as tightly as possible. But that means if you want to delete a value from somewhere in the middle or, or the value at the beginning, that means you have to do shifting, right? So the worst case is if I ask to delete the value at index zero, I have to shift everything back down uh, one to fill in that hole that we make in index zero. Right? So, so, so uh, deleting that index becomes is, is O n, right? It's, it's linear complexity. Um, what about for the linked list version to delete a value at, at index, right? Um, same argument that we talked about for. Um, um, inserting a value uh, in the middle. Um, so again, if, if, if you knew, if, if you had a pointer already to the particular value that needed to be removed from the linked list, uh, that's a constant time operation. But 
because uh, anytime you have to search a linked list, it's an O N. You know, you have, you have to perform at worst case uh, in iterations, in following pointers to get to the node um, that you're searching for. So in this case, to delete a value index, um, my worst case is I might have to delete the last node. Um, if you knew it was the back node, you already have a pointer to the back node, so you just delete it in constant time. But if I, if I want to delete the, the, the value one before the back node, um, I don't have a pointer to it. So the only way to get to the one before that, before the last node, is to start at the front and, and iterate through all in items uh, till I get to that item. And then I can delete. So, so delete index is also a linear time. Um, o in operation for linkage, right? So, so I just described what you have to do, you know, so, so you basically have to have a loop that just follows pointers, keeping track of, okay, I'm, I'm currently, when you start at front, that would be index zero, the, the, and, and I, I probably described it, there's, there's um, um, you, you probably want to do a, a special case if you're asked in, to delete index zero, that's deleting the front node, right? Um, and you could, you could also, you know, test or check for a special case if you're asked to delete the back node. So in that case, you can also do it in constant time. So if you know that the list is of size five and you're asked to, in, to, to delete the value at index four, that's gonna be the last valid index since we use zero-based indexing. Uh, you can just use that as a special case and do a constant time to remove the back node. Otherwise, you do have to do that kind of search that I talked about. So you have to do some sort of a loop. Um, um, and, and get down there, make certain that you have a, a pointer to the node that needs to be removed. Um, and th th this one, um, what, when you're deleting a node from, from these two, um, last two tasks, is probably the most complex um, conceptually when you're doing this with a linked list, because you, know, you, have to, you have to remove that node out of the linked list and make certain that you correctly get the next pointer for the node before that to, to, to skip over and point to the to the node after the node you're removing, right? So that's conceptually the hard part of, of working with linked lists here, do, doing all the stuff correctly with the pointers for your linked list and stuff. Um, and then the last task is um, also removing a, a value potentially from the middle of the list. But in this case, we're going to do a search. So instead of being told exactly which the, the location of the value to remove, um, you're told which value you want to remove, right? Um, and So um, yeah, I mean, you know, you can read this, but um, the, the general approach is pretty similar for your um, linked list based version. So, so, so again, you might want to just do a special case. Um, if it happens to be that the value that's asked to be removed is the, the, the front value, uh, you just remove the front value in constant time. If it happens to be the, the back value, you can remove the back, back value in constant time. If neither of those is the case, though, you have to kind of search through the list to find the node with that value and then remove that node. So um, I think I describe it here. Um, uh, I mean, it is possible that for these lists that, that they could have uh, duplicates, so so nodes, so so values in the list that are that are the same, that are equal. So in that case, you should remove the first value in the list that's equal to the value you're asked to, to delete, right? So if I have if I have a, a list of integers um, and if I have two twos in there, whichever is the first two would be the one that, that gets removed if you're asked to delete the two from the list. So. All right, um, yeah, it's already 12 here. So questions, comments? Anybody want to clarify anything? All 
Okay, um, kind of in summary on this, um, I mean, um, definitely, you know, the, the, the size of this assignment, uh, the, the complexity looks increased, right? But what you guys are doing um, is um, about the same as what you just did for the previous assignment, but now you're redoing kind of the things I mean, again, we're working on a templatized version of a list here, but but now we're doing them with a linked list implementation instead of an array-based implementation. So, so again, you're you're going to be re-implementing kind of the insert front and insert back, and then um, a couple of other member methods using a linked list now. Okay, but you know, kind of as secondary goals. Um, in the meantime, you know, there's a lot to learn about uh, object-oriented inheritance here. Um, um, you know, so base abstract base classes and and this idea of, of a defined API, right? So you're kind of getting all getting a flavor of all that. This is all very common ways of structuring, um, like a data type, a data structures library, um, or, or or something similar um, might be laid out with this kind of inheritance where where you def define an abstraction and then you have some different concrete implementations um, that have different performance characteristics. You know? So array the array-based list would be more useful in some situations, depending on what the, what the common operations are and the linked list version, you know, since it's better in some, for some kinds of these methods for the API, but worse in performance for others, it would be better to use the linked list version uh, for other situations. Um, um, all right, no, no final questions. If not, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end the session here um, and we'll get this posted for anybody that wasn't able to join kind of live. Um, as usual, I had a lot of good uh, back and forth on assignment five. I think people are finally really getting it. So I hope you enjoyed the assignment. Um, I know a lot of people uh, did pretty well on it and kind of are finally figuring some things out now. Um, um, so, um, all right, so that's it. Um, you know, send me emails or comments on your repositories as you're working on the assignment five or assignment six. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, later then.